Hello everyone, we are here again with the second uh, video of thermal simulation on a power PCB using ANSYS. So as we discussed before, uh, we get to the point that uh, we inserted the geometry to the uh, ANSYS Maxwell. So if I right click on the uh, geometry section of the uh, Maxwell 3D module and click edit, it's going to start ANSYS Maxwell. So uh, so you can see that here I have my power PCB and uh, you can see the um, parts over here, the copper and the FR4. So next thing um, I'm going to do is I, I'm, I need to define a region. So had uh, individual directions, so I'm going to select 50% for all of the directions except Z directions. So it's going to, I'm going to leave it to zero. Okay. So uh, now I have my region. Uh, I'm going to make it invisible. So next thing I need to do is I need to go to Maxwell solution type and uh, make sure that my solution type is eddy current. So then um, I need to define boundary conditions. So I'm going to press F key to select faces and select this face and right click, assign excitation and uh, sign current. So I'm gonna name it um, C1N and for the value I'm gonna type C1 and uh, OK. So it's asking me how much is the current. So I'm gonna uh, say 200 times square root 2 uh, copy it so that I can have it on my clipboard then the next current right click sign excitation current C2N C2K same value K and for the last one excitation current C3N value is 3 k okay. same value then i need to define the uh, sorry if i go to the equations okay mm -hmm. here uh, select this one and assign current excitation swap direction c1 out and c1 k next current right click current excitation right click current excitation it's going to be c2 out and C2, OK. Sorry, I forgot to swap direction. OK, then. And the last one, sign excitation, current, swap direction, C3 out, and C3, OK. OK, uh, then the next thing is... Uh, I need to go to parameters and assign matrix. So it needs to verify the conduction passes. I'm gonna select all of these conduction passes and click OK. Then uh, I need to go to the uh, setup, add solution setup. Um, so here, percentage error one. Maximum number of passes, 20, convergence, refinement per pass, let's say 50%. Okay, and then for the solver, um, okay, so here I'm gonna say um, 60 hertz at the list, no, uh, at single point, and then 20 kilohertz at single point two frequencies because for my case uh, it is uh, between 6 hertz and 20 kilohertz so select ok then 
let's check our parent c1 in c1 out c2 in c2 out c3 in and c3 out okay and then in the excitation set at the effects for all of the metals then let's check our model over here um, validation check so everything is fine and our simulation is ready to run so we're gonna go to the simulation and analyze all so uh, you can see that we have specified the current excitations and the we set the other currents for all of the metal uh, parts and um, we've uh, specified the um, materials for all different parts so you can see that uh, these are all copper parts and this is the PCB or FR4 and this is vacuum for our region and there is another box for the air chamber and it's non model so it's not modeled in the simulation it's just for the uh, geometry purposes for the other modules in ANSYS workbench okay uh, if we go to the solution results right click on results and click solution data and it's gonna um, give us the results so go to the convergence and plot and passes let's say table okay um it's gonna take a little while so uh i'm gonna stop the video and we'll come back when it is finished So uh, you can see that our simulation has finished and uh, it has the uh, solution has reached to its convergence criteria. So we can close the um, solution data and we can right click on the results and go to create eddy current report, rectangular plot. And we can draw a resistance or um, we can multiply it with current square to get uh, the losses. So I'm gonna multiply it with uh, C1 times C1 uh, divided by 2 because the C1 was the maximum uh, current so I need to divide it by uh, 2 to get the RMS value or root mean square value okay so uh, if I do this for two other currents to an add trace and also for C3 mm -hmm. and add trace so you can see here that uh, this plot is the um, power losses for each of the copper traces versus the frequency so you can see that uh, the frequency is starting from uh, 60 Hertz to 20 kilohertz so um, as you would expect the frequency uh, the losses are higher for the higher frequencies so uh, now our loss extraction simulation is finished and then we can save the project and uh, go to the uh, next simulation uh, module which is ANSYS Fluent uh, but before starting ANSYS Fluent simulations um, because as I said in the first video I'm going to um, compare the uh, results of the ANSYS Fluent and ANSYS IcePac so I need to make sure that everything is similar for those two packages so what I'm gonna do is uh, I will add a um, IcePac module here and then I will uh, open the ice pack uh, module and then I'm going to export the materials from uh, ice pack library and import it to the um, as is fluent library so that I can have the same 
um, I can have the same uh, materials for both software packages. Okay, so I can, <clears throat> if I close the Francis Maxwell, I can include uh, an ANSYS uh, ice pack module here. So uh, I'll select ice pack and insert it over here and then edit ice pack so it will start ice pack. Now ice pack is started so uh, I will go to model and uh, let me see where can I uh, so uh, if I go to macros and productivity and uh, export materials to fluent so if I select that one and uh, go back to the go back to here and here is the I can save the uh, SCM file then I can close ice pack over here and then I can delete it from here and then I will add the ANSYS fluid flow, flow module over here okay uh, so we will continue the uh, next steps in the next video till next video uh, if you like the video so far please subscribe for more content. Uh, see you in the next video. Take care.